sometimes when I'm writing code blocks in org mode, it'd be nice to see the line numbers on the left-hand side. I know we can do line number mode, but that works for the whole buffer. And of course, I can click in one of these and open it in a, a dedicated buffer, and then I see some line numbers. But a lot of times, I don't want to do all that extra work, and I would like to see those numbers just right on the left side here. So today, I look at uh, a way to put overlays in there uh, that would do it. So to work my way towards that, what we would like to do is find the region that defines our code block. And in this little example here, we can use the um, org element context to get the properties of this code block. And if you look, if I run this uh, particular code, it moves my cursor to the beginning of this code block. So we can use this to get properties um, that we can use to identify this region. We'll come back to this in a minute. The way I want to put numbers in is as overlays. These are temporary overlays that go in the buffer and don't change uh, the actual uh, text, but they visually appear. And so we can use uh, Emacs to make overlays. So here we'll make, uh, make a simple overlay, and then here we use uh, a property uh, to put a property on it before the string with the value of one. And so if I, if I use this, what's going to happen is the cursor will move to the beginning of the line and it will insert the letter one or the number one like that. And that's a temporary thing. If I look uh, in the real code, there's no one. Right, and now when I come back, uh, actually that, that one's gone. It's just moved up here. So what we would like is a function that will, on any line, put that number and we'll want to store these overlays in a variable so that we can remove them later. So we create a number line overlays uh, variable, make it buffer local because we don't need it anywhere else. And here's a function that will put a number at the beginning of a line. So we move to the beginning of the line, create an overlay, uh, generate a formatted uh, string, and we add the, the list, uh, add it to the list. So now if I run this, it's going to put uh, a four right here and it's uh, got th two spaces in here because I formatted uh, the field to be three. And you can see here that we uh, get the list uh, back. And that'll make it easy for us to delete them. So all we have to do to delete these overlays is uh, use map C to go over every element in the number line overlays and apply the delete overlay. And then once we're done with that, we'll set the list to be empty. Okay, so that, uh, if I run that, let's do it real quick. Then you should see this four disappear, like that. All right, so we can add them and take them off uh, pretty easily. So that brings me to the final uh, code block that will put some numbers uh, over on the left-hand side temporarily. And let me talk a, a little bit about some of the hacks. So the numbers will not automatically update. You'll put them on when you want them, and we'll make any key press get rid of them when we get back to work. And the reason for that is uh, making the numbers update is, is actually complicated and requires some uh, quite a few hooks that account for uh, line changes. So here is here's a code block uh, that does it. We have our our number line overlays variable to store them. We make it buffer local. Uh, in our number line source block function, uh, we will use a save excursion macro so that the point doesn't move. We get our source block. We use the value property to get the lines of code and calculate the number of lines by splitting on a carriage return. And we subtract one from that uh, because we're going to number from one to n minus one. Then we go to the beginning of the uh, source block, which is going to be somewhere like this header line and we search forward for the value. So the value is the code, and that will uh, search forward to that point, and then we go to the beginning of, of that code, which is the first line. Now we loop for i in the range of one to uh, the number of lines, and for each uh, iteration, we go to the beginning of a line to make sure we're there, create an overlay, uh, format the overlay, and add the list, and then move forward a line. So that should move us through each line and add a number to it. And then after, uh, after that's done, 
uh, we will read a key so that we can clear them. And once you press a key, it will delete each overlay and set the, the list to zero. So let's take a look at, at, how, at this. If we run it, we get line numbers for each uh, line in our block. And if you have an error message that says line 20, you can easily see where it is. Put your cursor uh, there and, and you can uh, move to it. I'm not totally sure about this part down here, if we need to clear it or, uh, or what. Uh, but if you don't clear it, then the numbers will quickly get out of, out of sync if you're not updating the numbers uh, by some mechanism. So that's pretty much it. Uh, the idea would be you, you actually run this um, interactively, and it would put your uh, numbers on. I'm not sure why some of these are black and some of these are, are light gray. Uh, seems to be something to do with the indentation. But we might modify this to make it easy to go to a line number or, uh, or something like that. But that's it uh, for this, just to get an idea of how simple it would be to get those line numbers. That's it for today.